five tips for staying in the know with Swaggle Haas. Comically Correct Comics. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Comically Correct Comics. I am Comic Guy Bry, and today is a super awesome and special video because we have Swaggle Haas Comics in the house. What's going on? <laughs> if you guys don't know um, about Swaggle Haas's channel, and you enjoy my content, I think you will absolutely enjoy his content. So go check him out over on his channel. So today's video, what sparked this conversation? Well, first of all, I've just been wanting to do more collaboration videos with other YouTubers that um, had similar themes and styles. And I came across Swaggle Haas, and he is just totally my speed, um, just totally digging his content. I think our two channels really do jive together. So Expect to see some more uh, collaboration videos. They're a lot of fun to do. And before we get any further into this, let's mention the giveaway. So for this video, we're gonna be giving away a CGC 9.8 Amazing Spider-Man number 55, the second print. Oh, now, <laughs> there, this is the perfect prize for this video because we're gonna be talking about comic book trends. We're gonna be talking about some pretty controversial things that are going on in the market. And a lot of people might be of the mind that this book has no business being in a slab and they'd be entitled to that opinion. Other people like myself, I can't wait to get this in a slab and put it on my wall. But I think there's one thing that we can all agree upon is that this book is absolutely slab worthy if it's free. So in order totally. to win, so in order to win this slab, all you have to do is subscribe to both channels and comment on both videos. You'll see in the thumbnail on both our channels of the videos posting um, at the same time, you'll see this slab so you'll know which one to go to. Subscribe to both channels, comment on both videos, and you are entered to win. Now, you are gonna have to be a little bit patient with this because um, this book is a pre-order and then I have to send it to CGC. So I do think it will be fast-tracked though. So uh, you'll get it as fast as humanly possible, but it is going to be at least two or three months. And this is the perfect time to do this video for so many reasons. It's so relevant and um, also because Swaggle Haas has a giveaway coming up. Isn't that right? That's right. Uh, well, at the you know time of this recording, I'm hovering around the 940 subscriber mark, and I'm trying to reach that milestone of 1,000. And uh, I set up a little giveaway for myself, and I'll put a link, uh, you know, maybe in this description, or I'll definitely put a link in in my description on my channel uh, when we have the other version of this video. Uh, and I'll point you guys to that. And if you feel like you know you want to subscribe and and enter the contest to win one of the giveaways, I'll talk. I'll tell you about the books that are you know, up for grabs in that video. And uh, hopefully, you know, you can sign up and, and you enjoy my content. Let's get him to a thousand subs, you guys. Uh, it, like you said, it's probably already gonna happen. He's just on fire, just skyrocketing. And I was trying to figure out why, like why is why are you like just killing it so bad? And then it dawned on me last night. It's like, because you have killer content. <laughs> There's no uh, mystery. It's just, you're, you're, you're killing it with content. That's what's going on. I appreciate so, that. Yeah. So, uh, but there was some incentives if you got to 1100 or 1050 in the same week. Isn't that right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for adding that. Yes. Yeah, so, so how I have the contest set up is that, you know, when I hit a, a thousand, I'm going to wait till, you know, the end of the week to close the contest. And so if I hit a thousand, I'm going to give away one of the five books that I, that I put up. If I hit 1050, I'll give away two. And if I hit 1100, I'll give away three. So, you know, it, it's a win-win. If I can get more people to hop on board, then we'll give away more books and, and, you know, we'll have fun with it. Um, so on that subject, Swaggle Haas, how do you feel about this comic book market, the trend, these crazy sales of something, this is a perfect example, Amazing Spider-Man 55? Yeah, I, I mean, you, you you said it up really well, but, but you know, before I get into the pain, let me just say thank you so much for having me on uh, Comically Correct Comics with Bri. You know, Bri, you've been an awesome channel. Uh, I really, really enjoyed watching your stuff and, and your content and super, super knowledgeable, especially when it comes to the CGC stuff. Um, 
for so sure. thank so. thank you so much for having me and and hopefully you guys uh you know if, if if i'm new to to your subscribers hopefully you guys like having me around um but yeah to your point about the uh this spider-man book and and the second print and and what's going on i mean it it, it it's crazy i mean I, all I see in my Instagram feed is, is people talking about this book. It, that's what it feels like. You know, there's so much controversy, whether people think that this is something that, like you said, shouldn't be slabbed or this is ridiculous because we have too many variants or you have people thinking like, this is the next thing that I want to put on my wall. I mean, who, who's to say? I mean, I, I feel like there's, regardless, there's, there's definitely polar opinions on it and it's, it's very divisive, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the variant thing. I mean, what we're seeing with the um, incentive ratio, secret variants, which is a whole new yeah. ball game, and it seems like they're taking that to the next level as well. And then every comic can have exclusive covers on top of that. And if it's a popular one, there might be like uh, the last run, and there's 70 exclusive covers, I think. Right. And it's a completionist's nightmare. I mean, you absolutely can't be a completionist in, in the comic book uh hobby these days unless you're made of money but at the end of the day i think it's important to remember that the market dictates the market dictates price the market dictates what's hot and um you know this video isn't really meant to be too political or too divisive in that sense it's just uh, as reggie would say we wanted to provide some tips that um, help you to not catch a brick, as Reggie would say, right. um, when navigating this market. And um, without further ado, guys, let's jump right into the five tips for staying in the know. And we're going to start with number one, which is get connected online. This is a critical um, aspect to being in the comic collecting hobby these days. It the the landscape has just completely changed a huge part of it happens online and there's really three apps that i think are the most important and one you're obviously already on youtube um, and so we won't talk about that but the other two apps that i think are imperative to have are key collector app and instagram and key collector is a tool that must be used correctly it's a fantastic source of information. There's obviously many, many people working behind the scenes to bring relevant, timely information and deliver it right to your phone for like $1.99. It's important to note that Key Collector is not a sponsor yet. Hit me up if you're watching this Key Collector. I'd love to work with you. Um, but if you didn't have Key Collector, you'd be at a major disadvantage because you'd have to go collect all that information yourself and you would definitely be too late because today's market is just lightning fast. You know, announcements are made um, about movies or um, different developments and stories and instantly the market reacts. And that's something that's different. That's something that is new to the comic book market. And a lot of people are uneasy with that because a lot of people have been collecting for so many years and it wasn't that knee jerk, um, but it is what it is. And you either are gonna get on board or get left behind. And so I think it's really important for you to pick up that app and then learn how to use it correctly. Um, I would not recommend responding to every single notification and alert that you get on that app because you would end up uh, just losing your ass in spending so much money. So do your research, do your due diligence, take the notifications and the information as uh, what they are, just information. You still need to do your due diligence and look into it. Look at FMVs, look at the past sales and, and uh, try not to be too knee jerk with those alerts. But there's also countless other features of the app that are super helpful besides just the alerts. There's all kinds of different categories and stuff. And you can mine those categories and find some information that isn't super, super hot that will help you make some really wise decisions. Um, and then Instagram, the other app, Instagram is just a necessity these days. The community that's on Instagram is amazing. The ease at which they let you message other people, tag the connect connectivity of it is just awesome. Uh, there are, you know, of course there's other, social media apps like Facebook. And I just, the reason I didn't mention it here is because I've just have, I've had overwhelmingly negative interactions on Facebook. I don't know what it is, but the groups seem to be just 
more negative than Instagram. And so I choose to just be on Instagram alone. Those two apps, in my opinion, are imperative to have to navigate today's market. Yeah, you bring you bring up a lot of great points. I mean, I think uh, to start with Key Collector, it, it's a great app, not only just to like help you understand the trends and, and see, you know, what the hot books are, but even on a personal level, if you just are a fan of like, Spider-Man, this is a good way to help you understand, you know, what Spider-Man books um, have maybe some significance, whether they're first appearances or they're hot because they correlate to stories or they're just, you know, little fun facts about certain books. So I definitely recommend anyone who uh, wants to help sort of navigate th these sort of trends is definitely have that app at your disposal. And then, like you said, on Instagram, Instagram is a great place. A lot of news going through it, a lot of people talking about comic books. And then also, uh, people even buy on Instagram and have success buying books there. So you can find, you know, maybe if a, a hot book or, or whatever is is really, you know, going off on eBay, you might be able to find a better deal on Instagram. Yeah, I can I can attest to that, that I have made countless sales and purchases on Instagram, not a single negative experience. Right. <laughs> I was just surprised by that, but because like on eBay, I have negative experiences all the time. And eBay, there's ramifications for having a negative experience. Right, you get exactly. Negative feedback. But in Instagram, there's no ramifications. I mean, somebody could totally screw you over um, and there would be no recourse for you. But that's what's so interesting to me is that even with that being an option, it's never happened. So um, I think it just speaks to the strength of the community and people in this community, in the comic book community, being trustworthy and um, helping each other out. Yeah, I agree. Hit them with number two on the list. All right. My number two uh, tip here is going to be pay attention to pop culture news. Now, uh, what do I mean by this? I guess I guess I'm trying to say, you know, with with the market in terms of comic books and what is trending and what gets hot and, and where the books move. To me, it seems like uh, there's always a correlation to what's going on in pop culture. So that could be, you know, movie news that could be, um, you know, video game news that could be other forms of entertainment property news. And usually what ends up happening is, is those announcements in the pop culture news sphere are the things that end up moving books within the market. So perfect example this year was, you know, the very first time that we heard uh, an actor, Jonathan Majors was going to be playing Kang the Conqueror was in a deadline article. So that's a movie news website that once that wasn't announced, uh, all of a sudden we saw, you know, Avengers number eight, first appearance of Kang the Conqueror overnight on eBay, you know, selling book after book after book after book. So uh, that is, this is definitely one way that you can sort of help uh, understand where the trends are going to go and and what, you know, what might be moving in the market is if you're paying attention to the pop culture news, uh, it's, it's very, very likely that you'll be ahead of what's going on in comic books. Definitely. And so what, what sources do you go to for pop culture news? Sure. I mean, you can you can take a look at at Deadline um, is a you know a movie news site. You can look at Hollywood Reporter is a movie news site, um, and that's just that's just one avenue to do it. You can pay attention to you know video game news like blogs like Kotaku if you guys know about that one, um, or you know you can also watch YouTubers who are not necessarily in the comic book space but are in the movie news space. Um, and you know there's there's many of them out there. I'm sure you can just just look them up, and and that'll help inform you. Uh, where the market might be moving. All right, so both of the first two points actually totally play in to the third point, which is learn how to tame your FOMO. So FOMO is the fear of missing out. And man, do I get it bad. I get FOMO so bad. Every time I get a notification on my phone or there's movie news announced, or somebody posts a grail on Instagram or their new comic book day pickups, I get this little twinge of FOMO every time where I want to go hit the Ebays and just buy everything. And it's something that I've had to learn to tame over time. And a couple tips that I would have for you on how to tame your FOMO is playing the tape through. So if I'm considering a purchase, um, I stop and think like, okay, First of all, is this purchase going to be for my PC or am I going to try to flip it? And if I'm going to try to flip it, how uh, how much will the price have to go up to in order for me to sell it in order for it to make sense? How much time is that going to take? Is there something else I would rather have my money tied up in that would have that would take less time and have a bigger profit as far as flipping it? 
Um, so playing the tape through and thinking like, oh, okay, um, you know, if I buy this book at twenty dollars right now, it's going to have to go up to thirty or forty, and then really looking at the book and thinking, wait, it does that even have potential to getting to thirty or forty? Um, but if it's for the PC, it's a completely different set of questions. And if it's for the PC, these questions are uniquely personal to you. Um, what you collect in your PC is just what you collect it, and you have your own strategy and uh, philosophy around that. For me, the two questions that I ask myself for the PC is, um, does it bring me joy? And is there room for this book to grow? And that's where I'm at right now in my collecting world is I want to have both of those things because there's so many comic books to choose from that you absolutely can have both of those things. And um, what I mean is there's a lot of books that bring me joy that are just like hilarious covers or hilarious uh, villains or things like that, but they have absolutely no potential to grow. And so I've decided I don't want to keep things like that in my PC because um, then I just have all this money tied up and it's just never going to increase in value. I might get to that point someday, but for right now, I, I look to have both of the things that it brings me joy and there's room to grow. Now, the thing about FOMO is that sometimes it serves you really well and sometimes it does you dirty. OK, so an example of FOMO doing me dirty was Venom 26. OK, this new uh, this new villain appears on the scene. It's virus. It's a huge deal. There's all of these amazing covers. I mean, all the covers were just really, really cool. And I just got totally caught up in it. I got I bought too much. I started having them slabbed before the story even played itself through. And if I'd have followed my advice that I'm giving here and really played the tape through and paid attention to little clues like, oh, viruses uh, suit is taped together and things like that, I probably would have uh, decided otherwise on this book. So that's an example of FOMO doing you dirty. But an example of it serving you well is, for example, the uh, Clayton Crane Spider-Man number one facsimile print, the gold edition, um, the reprint of this book here. I really wanted it in the PC and I wanted it to go with this book. And so I bought it right when it came out. It sold out within an hour. Um, and since then, the price has been consistently up. And so sometimes FOMO can serve you well. And so getting comfortable and familiar with FOMO, learn when it's going to serve you well and when it's going to do you dirty will go a long way in today's comic book market. Yeah, you, you bring up a lot of great points. And, and I really like how you made the distinction between, you know, what's for the PC and, and what do you think you're doing for like an investment purpose? Because that that really is a big decision when sort of like trying to navigate your FOMO. Because, you know, I would say, you know, if it's for the PC and, and you're having FOMO on something because you always want to collect it, uh, you know, may, maybe it, it's worth, you know, uh, you know, feeling those instincts and, and, and pursuing that a little harder than the FOMO of just because you think you're going to make money on it, because that's the thing that like might burn you in the end. Mm -hmm. um, and, and ultimately, you know, I, I feel like, you know, comic books, it, it's not like Pokemon. I mean, you, you're just, you just have to come to the realization you're, you're just never going to have them all. You just can't like, unless you're Jeff Bezos, you know? No, so no, I no. think you just have to like, just use patience, um, understand that there will always be another book. That's something also I, I've, I always try to remind myself that it's like, oh, I really want this one grail that I'm pursuing and it's on eBay and it's going up and I'm, I want to bid, I want to bid higher and, and whatever. And I always have to tell myself, Mickey, Swigel Haas, there's going to be another book. It's going to come around. It's going to come right. around and have another chance. And, and that's the thing that, you know, when it starts to hit numbers that, I, that I'm starting to not feel comfortable bidding, that's when I try to really remind myself, like, there's going to be another one that comes. There's going to be another one that comes. And, and over the years of collecting, time and time again, that always happens. Like I always see that book come, come again. There's always another chance to get it. So that's something I try to remind myself with FOMO. Number four is going to be make connections. Now, what do I mean by that? I suppose that that's to say, you know, uh, try to make uh, friends with people uh, within the hobby. Like with the, with those could be people that uh, to the point earlier, you could find on Instagram or on Facebook, or those could be people that maybe you interact with on YouTube. I'm sure, you know, people have 
been talking to me and people have been talking to Brian and, and I've made connections that way. And additionally, um, make connections with people at your local comic book store. Uh, I've had experiences where, uh, you know, I, I've gone to comic book stores and talked to the, you know, the clerks working there and the owners and, and I actually use them to help you know, guide me for what new books to purchase because they're in that advantage where they get the books delivered to their store. And a lot of them, they they flip through all of them. I mean, they don't have the time to read everything, but they'll definitely flip through it and they'll see like, oh, this is a cool book. It has a first appearance of a new character or, hey, this, uh, this is a big storyline. Here's what's occurring. Um, so so they have that insight. And if you make friends with them and, and you go into your LCS and you visit and you, you can have these conversations and through your connections, and that can help guide you to uh, books that might be hot or trending. I had the personal experience um, some years back for Venom number three, which was the first appearance of Null. Um, I was, you know, exploring in the comic book store and, and I bought the first Venom and I, I enjoyed it. And then I was talking to the the LCS owner and he and he told me he was like, oh, you should you, you should definitely stay on this thing because I, I think that there's a big character that's that's coming, a big villain. And he encouraged me to pick up number two and number three. And I was lucky because then I found myself in, in ownership of, you know, first appearance of Null. So that's definitely something that I would suggest is, is make those connections with people and, and they can be really helpful, um, you know, uh, educating you and, and giving you tips on where to maybe look for comics. Yeah, for sure. And that's one thing that I am so grateful for the YouTube community is I've gotten some great specs just in the comments on my videos from, uh, from subscribers. Yeah, good and point, so good point. Yeah, so you guys, if you have some spec news, leave it in the comments and 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 let us in on it. So the last point um, actually goes right along uh, with the make connections point, and that is to actually read comics. Reading comics um, gives you just a great leg up in investing and speculating because you're in the know about the storyline, and then when you see a spec come through and you see something, somebody speculating on a character because this, this, and this, but you've read the story and you think, wait a minute, I don't know if I exactly agree with that. Like for instance, there was a spec the other, the other day that was um, that Monica Rambeau may appear in the MCU as Spectrum because there's a new toy that came out where she's wearing a white and black costume. And I'm like, wait a minute, Monica Rambeau wore a white and black costume in literally every character as, as Miss Marvel, as Photon and Spectrum. Very, very similar. And the toy could have been any of those things. So it gives you insider knowledge to be able to vet out these specs, which gives you a huge leg up if you're making investment decisions. And not to mention not to not to mention that in these crazy times that we're living in with the pandemic and with everything that's going on in the world politically, reading a comic and getting lost in a story can go a long way for self-care and mental health. And I highly recommend that you jump back in if you're not. I, it's one thing that I wish that I had more time to do, and I'm hoping that in this new year, I can actually set aside more time to just enjoy the stories and read the comics and kind of get out of the reseller mind frame and the speculator mind frame and just just enjoy the stories. Totally agree. I mean, I think, you know, that's something that that I, I try to do as much as I can is, is read the stories and just sort of enjoy like, you know, you can utilize different senses, right, for for the comic book hobby, not just looking at the covers, but you can actually feel the book and read it and, and do the whole thing. Um, and to, to just to piggyback off of off the point you were making with reading, uh, you know, it seems like more and more as you know we see the MCU and 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 other uh, properties in the comic book space, you know, that are being turned into movies. It it feels like the filmmakers and the producers are using the source material a lot. So uh, to your point, you yeah. know, when we have things like oh, we know we're going to get a Kang and the Conqueror storyline. I mean, if you know about Kang and you read some of his books and everything like that, you'll know like sort of where his plot goes and, and what other characters, you know, he, he touches, you know, in his journey. And it's, it's only logical to presume that, you know, that might be good waters to spec on uh, later on, you know, if you know that the, the characters are connected in that way. Or similarly recently, you know, the, if you were reading the Thor, uh, Donny Cates run, and you were specking on like, say, a Black Winter. I mean, before we actually got him in there, it was like 
being alluded to that he was coming. So if you're just reading the story week to week, you would know that eventually like you're going to get this first appearance of, you know, this big villain, whether or not that villain is someone who is going to stay, you know, for, for years to come, who knows, but you could, you could just sort of see it coming uh, because everything was there in the story. Absolutely. Yep. It just gives you that huge leg up. So there you have it guys, five tips to help you stay in the know and navigate this crazy comic book market. Don't forget if you subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below and then subscribe to Swagglehoss's channel and leave a comment on the corresponding video with the picture of the ASM 55 slab. You are in it to win it. And uh, I mean, awesome uh, free information, free giveaway here, free giveaway there. Why wouldn't people subscribe to us? I don't know. <laughs> no, just kidding, guys. It, just, don't don't subscribe unless you enjoy this content. I absolutely yeah, for don't sure. Want, for sure. But, and it's not maybe it's not for everyone. But if you did like it, leave a thumbs up on your way out. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Swagglehoss, for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys. We will see you over on Swagglehoss's channel. Bye.